we interrupt the regularly scheduled mass programming feeds. Watchmen bring this announcement to the earth. A famine of the word of Yahuwah is found on the earth. Plagues are poured out in judgment. Important words of the Creator Yahuwah have been dismissed. Without the word, people are not living abundantly. My people perish for lack of knowledge. There is a city whose builder is Yahuwah Aloha. There is healing for the nations. A light unto the Gentiles, restore all truth. Join us as we share from the word of Yahuwah. It's a beautiful day in Hawaii, and we're going to be talking about the calendar. Let's go do it. So let's talk about the calendar. I guess what I want to start with is just teaching you guys how to count to Shavuot, and then if you guys have any questions, we'll go from there. First of all, there's no counting of the Omer in scriptures. That might be a shock to people, but it's not there. I haven't seen it there. Has anybody else seen it there? No. Okay, so there's no counting. No, not once. We're counting seven Shabbats complete. We know that the count begins with the Feast of First Fruits, and that is on day 16. Yahushua said, destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it. So that was the third day. The second day was the High Shabbat on the 15th, and the first day was on the 14th, the day of Passover. 14, 15, 16, that's three days. There is no three days and three nights. He said by the third day, not three days and three nights there. Now he does talk about he would be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, but the heart of the earth is not the grave. So it is the center of the earth. It is Jerusalem, I believe is called the center, the heart of the earth. Troy Miller does a great job of answering that question. It's one of his FAQs, frequently asked questions, and he can go through that. And also the count, if you guys have any trouble counting, Okay, so the first week, the first Shabbat complete is going to begin on the 16th. That is always the first day of the third week. The 16th to the 22nd is that third week. And then the 23rd to the 29th is the fourth week. So we always have the first two weeks of the seven Shabbats complete in the first month. Right? Everybody good to that point? Yeah. Might be nice to clarify that you are speaking when you're giving 16 to the, you know, whatever, you're speaking of biblical days. Right. This is on Yahuwah's calendar. New moon is a concealed time. It is concealed. So it's kaseh. The word is kaseh. It is translated concealed. It is also can be translated to full according to Strong's concordance, which is done on the King James translation. When I drill down to that word in various Hebrew etymological dictionaries, not one, but various, it's concealed. So that new moon is concealed, but new moon day, according to Philo, we see light come on the moon on the first day of the month. So we have new moon and then it ends. We know it's over when we see the first visible crescent. Okay. I haven't quite intellectualized this thought yet, but the thought occurred to me how it could just be habitually or whatever, just the way we're raised in Western society, but we tend to count by what? Even numbers. Usually that tends to be the easier thing, like two, four, six, eight. But I noticed at least in terms of Shabbats and things like that, you actually are counting in odd numbers. Well, like three, six, actually, one, actually you have an even and an odd, even odd, even odd. But after day one being new moon day and we see the first visible crescent, then seven days later, because we're adding seven to one, we have eight. So that's an even number. And then we'll add another seven. We have 15. Another seven is 22. And another seven is 29. So those are the four Shabbats every month. They're always the same every month on Yahuwah's calendar. Yeah. 8, 15, 22, 29. Darla, mm -hmm. you mentioned that the Strong's is what translates it as full. The Kasei. Yeah. Right? Because that they're basing it off of the King a virgin but yeah. if you take it etymologically back to the hebrew it means concealed right so that's the first time yeah. i've been able to understand people's confusion yeah. with saying that the new moon is the full moon they're basing it off of just that yeah. Yeah. To me, that seems like even though the strong concordance is really good, it, it is just 
a man-made thing at the end of the day, so it's not perfect. Sort of like well, an English translation. Why while there may be a really good English translation, that doesn't make it perfect because it's still just an English translation. This is an excellent source, by the way, creationcalendar.com. I have to say that when it comes to the new moon or the full moon, it was it was a no-brainer for me because you're not searching for the full moon. You can actually see it for the, yeah. For yeah. the new moon. That's true. That's a great point. World's Last Chance was my guide. Guy had nobody, and it was in the Ruach that started teaching me about all of Yahuwah's feasts and Moedim. And too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I never heard it from everybody else I knew was like hardcore Christians. And and when I started coming to the reality of this, I was so naive that I didn't expect the backlash that I got. You know, like I, I said, I didn't get saved till 41. So I looked up to all these people. I was like, well, you know, like a babe, but a babe at 41. So as I was reading the word, reading the word, I was like, wait a second, stuff isn't adding up here. And the Ruach was pulling at my spirit. And I was looking at what his word was saying and going, but what I'm reading and what I'm seeing are two different things. So then when I started spotting stuff in scripture and then pointing out to them so naively thinking, they're going to think I found something, you know, and they, and the nasty backlash that I got, like, it was just... I literally cried for six months off and on. Enemy had a heyday with me anyways. But what the Ruach did was just lead me to where I needed to go for the time. I would do, I was still following the Jews, doing the Friday night Shabbat, sundown, light the candles, dance all by myself, you know, spend the day in Shabbat and just enjoy and everything else. And then World's Last Chance was one of the apps that I originally came across where it, it helped lead me through and start to learn a little bit. So Great. I've always had that app on my phone. It's been like what, 10 years now. Yeah. I'm new to this and I learned Yah's name from Code Searchers. And I learned this calendar before I knew what a calendar was even an issue, right? Yeah. So from that perspective, it's like everybody's afraid. You have all these brave men and women that are finding Yah is giving them revelation and they're uncovering and they're, they're speaking out and they're, they're fine. Yeah. But the calendar, they won't touch. It just doesn't make sense. I it just blows me away. And it's common sense. If you want to look at it from somebody brand new, how is everyone going to be on the same, even looking forward, how is everyone going to be on the same calendar all over the world? How are they going to do that? Hold. The right? calendar is such a, the Rome's calendar is such a stronghold. It's man's calendar. It's crazy. And, and that, for me, it's understandable why, why the Roman calendar is such a stronghold because it's, it's literally all people know. Yeah. Worldwide, anywhere you go, people are on Monday through Sunday. It's yeah. all they've ever known. And then they're like raised up in that type of way. So it's just hard to wrap your head around it. And that's all you've known. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to wrap your head around it unless you are really searching for the truth from the Father. And if you are, then I believe He has the ability and the desire to share His calendar with us. Somebody had sent me a podcast. This is probably in 2009. And so there's a podcast in front of me. But over on the right side of the screen, I see some other podcasts. One of them says, still think Saturday's the Shabbat. And so I started listening. And this was a ministry, I believe, in New Zealand. Something about the truth down under or something like that. I listened to about three different videos he had on the calendar. I came to understand that what he was teaching on came from Troy Miller's site over at creationcalendar.com, what I believe I heard the rock say is go and look up 15 and 15th in the Strong's Concordance and see what it says in the scriptures about the 15 and the 15th day. So that's what I did. And then I realized he's on to this. This is a different calendar. It's not a Saturday Sabbath. And I don't need to go to the Dead Sea Scrolls writings of the Essenes to figure out what's in the scriptures. I can read the scriptures and all the evidence is right there. 
So we have here in Genesis 1, verses 14 to 16, and Elohim said, let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, and it came to be so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. So there's two great lights here that we are to have for signs and appointed times and days and years. We've learned as people on the earth to just pay attention to the sun and disregard the moon. If you look at any Roman calendar, the moon could be on the 17th of the month or it could be on the fourth day of the month or any day in between. We could have two full moons in one Gregorian calendar month. And so they'll call them a special name. Oh, this is the second full moon of the month. But there's only room on Yahuwah's calendar to have one full moon in a month and only one new moon in a month. We've lost the ability to look at the moon, but it is one of the two great lights for signs and appointed times. And so the point becomes, well, what sign is the moon showing? You can look at the sun. It looks the same any day. And you're not even supposed to look at the sun because you're your eyes. So you can't tell what signs are from the sun in terms of our weekly Shabbat or our appointed times. We do know there is the equinox. We know when the days are equal, dark to light, and also when there's the most light because it climbs from that equal point at the beginning of the year into the summer. And then we get back to the equal points of light and dark. And then we go to the greatest amount of dark and the least amount of light. And that's in the winter time. So now we're heading towards that summer time right now. All right. So then back to this calendar. This is the same calendar every month. We have new moon day, and that is a concealed moon. But Philo tells us that light will come on the moon on day one. And so when the sun goes down about 30 minutes after on new moon day, you will see the first visible crescent. And that lets us know that new moon is over day one. And the next day, day two, is the first work day of the first work week. And so here they've got them all in green for the first week. Those are all your work days, days one to six, though you'll see they have days two to seven. These are, these are monthly day numbers. These are weekly day numbers. The difference is just that we've got a day one added to each one of these days in the first week. But you can see down here, we've got the previous eight days added basically. One day plus the eight gives us nine. So here's the first issue with all these different calendars. The new year begins with a new moon closest to the spring equinox. So the spring equinox is generally March 20th. Sometimes they will announce it's gonna be on the 19th or the 21st, but generally it's the 20th. So for a new moon that is closest to the spring equinox, it has to be within 14 days of this. So if you count back 14 days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right here is your earliest that you can start a year. If you've got a new moon right in here, that's the earliest the year can start. March 20 is the equinox. Generally, that is it every year. This is a test that can be done. You can measure the dark hours to the light hours and it can be scientifically tested. Can what? I ask you a question? Yeah. If you're enjoying this video, click like, subscribe, click the bell, and please share this video. Shalom. Let's get back to the video. So on the equinox, why does it have to be after the equinox? It's the new moon closest to the equinox. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But so uh, not necessarily, it doesn't have to be after the equinox. It has no. to be closest to the equinox. No, so and that's something that's actually on this site, World's Last Chance. You can look in here. When does the new year begin? Let me just see if I can do that. When does the new year begin? And see if it comes up for us. I think they have a couple of different articles here. Reckoning the new year. You can see there's a few things here to look at. And I don't know if this is it or not. Just scrolling down. Okay, what do first century historians tell us about the new year? It's right in here. You can go through okay, this. Okay, I'll, I'll go through it. Yes. And we're yeah, the first century, the vernal equinox would have taken place just as the sun was entering the sign of Aries. Today, however, the equinox occurs in the sign of Pisces. 
So this is 2000 years later, we're in Pisces. So there's something about a clock ticking off, right? So it was in Aries, now it is in Pisces. We've got a celestial equator here and the sun's ecliptic path. Is Josephus's testimony consistent with reckoning the new moon nearest the vernal equinox at the beginning of the year? Yes. Mm -hmm. But is it consistent with always reckoning the first new moon after the vernal equinox? That will be no. So he will go through and, and explain this to you. But here it says, now let us examine a remarkable passage from Eusebius's ecclesiastical history. Eusebius was a Roman historian who lived from about 260 AD to 340 AD. In the following passage, he is quoting from the canons of Anatolius on the Paschal or the Passover festival. So this is what he says. And this is not an opinion of our own, but it was known to the Jews of old, even before Christ and was carefully observed by them. This may be learned from what is said by Philo, Josephus and Musaeus, and not only by them, but also by those yet more ancient, the two Agathobuli, surnamed masters and the famous Aristobulus, who was chosen among the 70 interpreters of the sacred and divine Hebrew scriptures by Ptolemy Philadelphus and his father, and who also dedicated his exegetical books on the law of Moshe to the same kings. These writers explaining questions in regard to the Exodus say that all alike should sacrifice the Passover offerings after the vernal equinox. Okay, we're talking about Passover day 14, not day one, okay? But that needs to happen after the vernal equinox in the middle of the first month. But this occurs while the sun is passing through the first segment of the solar or as some of them have styled it, the zodiacal circle. Aristobulus adds that it is necessary for the feast of the Passover that not only the sun should pass through the equinoctial segment, but the moon also. For as there are two equinoctial segments, the vernal and the autumnal, the, the spring and the fall, directly mm -hmm. opposite each other. And as the day of the Passover was appointed on the 14th of the month, beginning with the evening, the moon will hold a position diametrically opposite the sun. So they're on two sides of the heavens, as may be seen in full moons. And the sun will be in the segment of the vernal equinox and of necessity, the moon in that of the autumnal equinox. So the Passover itself cannot fall before the equinox. It has to be after. And so they also say the full moon must occur after the equinox. So that's it's almost saying the same thing there. You really can't get there with a new moon that occurs before March 7. Let's say the one in 2024 with the solar eclipse, right? The one that's supposed to cross the United States after seven years. That is supposed to happen on April 8th, 2024, I believe. That is not a new year, a new year for that solar eclipse. That's going to be month two. And how I know that is because it's not falling between March 7 and April 3. Those are the far sides of that. You will always know which new moon is going to start your new year. Just realize it's going to be within 14 days of the 20th. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've just come out of month one by a couple of weeks here. But in month one, let's just look at this. This is the same. You could have one calendar, this, and you, you know the calendar that we don't have to go buy one from Hallmark or Office Depot or Staples every month will look just like this. You've got new moon day as day one, and then eight, 15, 22, 29. And if there's 30 days in the month, it'll be over here. It'll be part of the new moon phase. If there's a day, let's say, let's say, just put it on a Saturday. Let's say that new moon was Saturday in this month. Then that means also the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th are going to see Rome's Saturday fall on them. But if there's a day 30, and then we go to a day one, then we go not to a Sunday on Rome's calendar, but a Monday will line up with 8, 15, 22, 29 for the next month. Some months are 29 and we immediately go into new moon the next day, you'd see your one here if that were the case. But if it's a 30 day month, you're gonna have a two day new moon phase. As soon as we come out of this day on the 29th, we go into our new moon phase. We're keeping new moon. It'll be one day or two. We'll know when we see the first visible crescent. And anybody east of you that sees the first visible crescent, it's automatically by default, the crescent is there when it gets over you. If you have clear view, no clouds and storms and stuff. Okay, any questions on that so far? 
Okay. All right, so let's look at this as if it's the first month and we have Passover here and it's it's in the sixth day position of its week, right? It began day nine and the sixth day of the week is day 14. The sixth day of the week is always a preparation day so you can prepare for your Shabbat. And this is the day that is Passover. So we have our Passover meal this evening. This is considered a high Shabbat. We're in Feast of Unleavened Bread from the evening of the 14th all the way to the evening of the 21st. Evening is a mixture of light and dark. So when we go to leavened bread, it's at dark time. We'll go and buy bread at this point. And then of course, we'll go right into the next Shabbat on the 22nd. So Feast of First Fruits is on the 16th. It's the first day of the third week. You can see day one and then just count down one, two, three. It's three weeks, first day, these days are always day one of their weeks, and these are always day twos. So the Feast of First Fruits is on the 16th. It is a work day. They're out in the field. They're gathering their barley grain, and they're going to prepare and make an offering with that. So we're counting Shabbat complete. A Shabbat complete is a whole week through to the Shabbat. So you can see on your month one, you've always got your first two weeks of the Shabbats complete to count. We're counting seven Shabbats complete, and then we're going to add 50 days. So seven Shabbats complete. Let's say we've just counted these first two out of month one. Now let's look at this as month two. Okay. We've got our new moon, and maybe we had a day 30. Okay. So that's two more days. It's not going to be a 49-day count. We're counting Shabbats complete. So in your second month, you have week three, week four, week five, and week six. So now we're up to six Shabbats complete by the end of the second month. We have weeks three, four, five, and six in the second month. Okay, we still got one more week to count. And these new moon days are not going away. They're part of the count. Okay, so... Let's look at this all as if it's month number three, okay? This is now month three, and we've counted six weeks. We have our new moon day we got to deal with there in the count, and then we're going to count one more week. This seventh Shabbat complete always lands on the third month, the eighth day. Hmm. That's your seven Shabbats complete. That always ends on that day. So then- that amazing. <laughs> yeah. It just lines up so well is amazing it lands there every time this ends up being about 52 days it's not 49 days it's hard for people that do not understand how to get to shabbat in the first place on yahuwah's calendar to realize this is more than 49 days or the day after 49 days equals day 50 well that's why you guys i'm gonna go throw some food to the ducks or they're gonna bug me hold on a second <laughs> break duck break <laughs> duck break Remember how body Jonathan body. used to have the croaky frogs? Well, Darla has the ducks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so no matter how much planning you do to uh, video around the croaky frogs, there's other farm animals to deal with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you have the ducks. It's so cute. I love to hear them in the background. Yeah. Little, yeah. Like when you're chattering, they chatter, chatter, chatter. And, yeah. they, and they soften up. It's so funny. You can hear them getting closer too, eh? Like, yeah. uh, we're hungry, we're hungry, we're hungry. They're, pretty persistent. they're like, could we have some dog food, please? <laughs> I think they're learning that they can get that from you when you're teaching. Isn't yeah. that funny? How? <laughs> nope, mama's in there. We can get some food out of her. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Okay, where was I? We were talking and we got the, okay, we were, here's where we were. We were on the third month, the eighth day. That's your seven Shabbats complete. It always lands there. There's not a thing that'll change. If we had two months of just a one day new moon, it's still going to land right here because we're counting Shabbats complete. If we had two months with two new moon days, that's four days of new moon. It's still going to end right here because we're counting just these weeks. We're not we're not counting the new moon days, but if you had to count them all the days as opposed to the weeks, generally you get 52 days 
but it would be 49 plus four or 49 plus two. It's gonna be between 51 and 53 days. It's generally 52 days. So that gets you beyond a count of 50. And that is what the churches have done is they count 49 plus one is 50. We're already past 50 just to get to our seventh Shabbat complete. So that's not the answer. So then there's a 50 day count past this. So we start counting days now. I just want to ask, what is the scripture that stipulates? I was just thinking that. that. I was just thinking that. Yeah, Leviticus 23, which is the chapter, the famous chapter of all of Yahuwah's feast. 15 and 16. Want me to read it? Yeah. And from the morrow after the Shabbat, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, you shall count for yourselves seven completed Shabbatoth until the morrow after the seventh Shabbatoth, you count 50 days. Then you shall bring a new grain offering to Yahuwah. Okay, so we are counting our seven completed Shabbats, not Omers, right there. And then from the morrow after that, we count 50 days. So that's the part that most people discredit or don't add in they they do just the seven sabbaths complete and leave it at that well technically they're not counting they're not counting new moon days at all because they don't know the calendar and they're not counting seven completed sabbaths they're counting 49 days right and they're counting omers so so here's where we have, we're counting seven Shabbats complete. I'm going to grab one more translation. Hold on a second. You have two the first month, two Shabbats complete the first month, and four in the second month. And the seven Shabbat complete is in the third month. I did a big study over at Troy Miller's place, creationcalendar.com, on when is the scriptural feast of weeks. And it took me eight hours to study through it. But this is one of the translations that he recommends, like they get it right. And so let me get over there. Even though it says modern English, it's very, the writing is like super King Jamesy in terms of the font, Leviticus 23, and the way it's laid out. In verse 15, you shall also count for yourselves from the day after the Shabbat that you bring the wave sheaf, seven Sabbaths. They must be complete. Then after the seventh Sabbath, you shall count 50 days when you shall present a new offering to the ever living. Shabuot is a summer festival. So we were looking at the third month into the first week. This is our seventh Shabbat complete day eight. So from here, we count 50 days. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, this is going to matter whether there's 29 or 30 days. 20, 21, 22. Now we're looking at month four. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Here is the one place that Troy Miller and I do not agree. Because so it's either the 28th or 29th? He wants, he wants it to be on the 29th. So he's, if we can, if we can back, just remember it's on the 28th of the fourth month. Okay. When we counted a two day new moon at the end of the third month and the beginning of the fourth, we had a two day new moon. We counted because we counted 29 and 30. If we only had a 29 day third month, we would end up right here on the 29th, but how Troy Miller is doing this. Let's, let's rewind. Let's go back to the third month. Okay. See the third month here. Okay. Here's our seventh Shabbat complete. We start counting 50 days starting here. But what Troy Miller is doing is he counts this day and then he begins his 50 count. So in essence, he's counting 51 days. So he's always going to end up on the 29th or in the new moon phase. I think that's beautiful, but 
it doesn't say count 51 days. It says count 50 days. It just doesn't work out. And all months before they say about 700 BC, all months were 30 day months. And I believe that calendar is going to be restored. So for whatever reason, just like when we, let's go back to, let's look at this as the first month, okay? Passover's on the 14th. It's not on the 15th. It's a day before the Shabbat, okay? In this situation, we have Shabbat, Feast of Weeks, seven Shabbats complete plus 50 days. If it's a 30-day month, and I think they will all be that when the calendar is restored, we'll have a 360-day, 12-month only year, then we're always going to count 30 days. We'll always end up on the 28th on this feast. I don't know why it's that way, but I can't get my brain to count 51 days and call it 50 days. I can't just so I can end up here. But I will tell you that it is extremely close. And if there's 29 days, we will end up here. If there's 29 days in the third month, we will end up on the 29th and we'll have Shabbat and we'll have Shabbat all at the same time. Maybe you will want them to be one day separate. This is the fourth. It's right at the fourth month for Shabbat. It's just, you know, it's either going to be here or it's going to be here. And it's all going to depend on how many days are in the new moon. Is it one or two days? Does, does the third month have 30 days or does it have 29? It is a summer festival. So when we see those pictures of the menorah and you have the Feast of Yahuwah laid out like a menorah and you have that middle candle, this is a summer and it's between Passover and the seventh month feast. So it's right at the end of the fourth month. It's absolutely at the end, but just saying it's more, it's a summer thing. It's not like, oh, he fulfilled the first four spring feast. It's not a spring feast. It is a summer feast. It is when the wheat is harvested. It's when the grapes are harvested, when the olives are harvested, when the mandrakes are harvested. Those things are summer fruits. Doesn't it take like a hundred and over a hundred, like a hundred and two days for a week? Yes. It takes a become... Yeah, it's generally a hundred and two days. The only thing that's going to throw that off is your new moon day counts. Are they two days or are they one day? Well, I was thinking about the wheat, the harvest, when you harvest wheat. Yeah, exactly. It's over a hundred days. Yeah. Yeah. It lines up perfectly with that. And it's generally 102 days. It could be 101 days. It could be 103 days. And it's really, it's a regard around new moon. It's a pausing and waiting for new moon, which are society has not been taught to wait on new moon we just don't get ahead of it you know we don't put the the cart before the horse on that we have to wait for new moon it's a and the, importance, the importance of it being that it's like it used to always get pointed out that it's an appointment you can't show up the day after a dentist appointment and expect the dentist to say oh okay <laughs> yeah let's move what? in and sometime, yeah. If yeah. we go and read down in, sorry, Donna. No, go ahead, Tessa. If we go down and read um, verse 21, Leah, can you read that? Sure. And on the same day, you shall proclaim a Kodash gathering for yourselves. You do no servile work on it, a law forever in all of your dwellings throughout all of your generations. Hallelujah. So that means it wasn't done away with. No. Forever. And my, forever. And my, yes. And my understanding is from 15 through to 21 in, in the verses, it is all talking about Shavuot. And then in 24, that's when he speaks about the seventh month feasts. Yeah. May this video enrich your love in and understanding of our Abba Yahuwah and His Word. Much has been hidden. Together let's seek the restoration of all truth. A Light Unto the Gentiles channel invites you to join the Hebrew Restoration and Code Searching team. Please email us at alightintothegentiles at gmail.com to let us know of your interest. Looking for fellowship? We invite you to join our Facebook group, Code Searching Hebrews.
Love, truth, and revelation are vital in these last days. The Hebrew Restoration and Code Searching Ministries, through a light unto the Gentiles, serves Yahuwah and the sheep from our Father's pasture. Please prayerfully consider a monthly donation to Restoration Farms Incorporated. Links are provided for you below in the description.